Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a very special treat, because I'm going to be reviewing the most wonderful romantic animated features of all time, starting with the song, Oh, this is the night, it's a beautiful night, and we call it Bella Knotted. Look at the skies. They have stars in their eyes on this lovely Bella Knotted. Yep, I'm talking about Lady and the Tramp. A story about the most beautiful pampered a Cocker Spaniel who meets a, a stray mutt who's a terrier mix, you know, going for all these wild adventures, and together. They fell in love, especially in this iconic spaghetti scene at Tony's restaurant. Yeah, you know that scene, <laughs> especially when the song is played. Yeah. This is, of course, the Diamond Edition that I picked up back in 2012 uh, when it was released. And I was very excited to get this release because I did have the 2006 uh, Platinum Edition when I bought it the uh, when I was in, of course, in college. I still have that release, by the way, and it's an excellent release. It's a two-disc set, uh, has a lot of features and all, and this release should do the same. And this is the main reason to have this, is because the fact that this was digitally remastered, and it was the first animated feature to be shot in CinemaScope, yep, the first widescreen aspect ratio that's destined for this film. Now, the first time I saw Lady and a Tramp, I saw this as a little kid. I'm not so sure if I have seen it in theaters because I was only a baby at the time. I was only like a, a year old and my brother was born. It had a re-release in 1986 uh, during the holiday season with all these other holiday films coming out. So I really admire the fact that, you know, these are two wonderful dogs together, falling in love, and this is a romantic story, but it has a lot of adventurous takes and wonderful characters to join in, I mean, and others that's happening, some, that, that, that sort of thing, and especially when it's being said in, in modern times, yeah, and I'm going to show you what the Blu-ray looks like, I mean, no doubt about it, uh, take out the slip cover, still looks the same, uh, even in the back, you can see uh, they, they had uh, deleted scenes. Uh, they even uh, talk about uh, the memory of Walt Disney coming from, you know, one of their, their siblings and everyone around. And you got some nice features joining in, too. Yeah, and plus you get to see this... Uh, on not only uh, Blu-ray, but DVD, and and of course they have one of those features where you can watch on the second screen and all. Yeah, I mean it's available everywhere. There is a re-release uh, that came out later, which of course the, you know you get to watch it on on a digital code, and you'll probably get some more new extras. You know, which is pretty slim. They're taking off like half of the features that's already on. The, the diamond edition as well as the platinum edition but that's why I'm always going to keep both of these because they're so much better but if I knew I wanted to get a digital code to, to add on my digital library I will. I just want to show you the cover again how beautiful and shiny it looks and you get to see Tony while singing the song Bella Note and of course you see both Lady and the Tramp just having delicious spaghetti on the house I mean in fact, uh, <laughs> it, it almost looked like a kiss too when when he took that one spaghetti, and the scene where uh, Tramp was just nodding his nose, uh, just giving it to uh, Lady with the meatball. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. anyway. Now to begin with the story, it's actually based on a 1945 uh, magazine story from Cosmolitan. Yeah, it's a woman magazine. 
which they had a story called Happy Dan the Cynical Dog, which was written by Ward Green, uh, which tells a story uh, about you know, how they first met, and and they weren't so sure how this is the whole thing is going to be set right to it. And I, I know, um, you know, through the animation process, because seeing that this is the first time to be shot in that aspect ratio, you know, for many uh, moviegoers and the audience to, to get into this new process of widescreen, which is being very common nowadays. Um, they're trying to find a way to go for several breeds of dogs, you know, trying to capture the movement to be more realistic that way. Um, especially when they were trying to use the spaghetti sequence, which apparently Walt Disney himself thought it was silly. Um, yeah, he, they proved him wrong, too, when Frank Thomas was against his decision. decided to leave it in there anyway. Um, and yes, believe it or not, this movie actually did have mixed reviews uh, upon its release, and some of which were negative, and maybe a little bit of positive uh, here and there because of the, the way the story goes. But over the years, I mean, it became so popular that um, even for its uh, 1986 re-release, people just couldn't stop talking about it, and people still remembered it. They they parodied a lot, especially <laughs> in the the movie Hot Shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't forget that scene. Or, and I know they parodied in Look Who's Talking Now. Uh, they parodied that in The Simpsons, and and of course. Uh, we did have a sequel to follow, yeah, your typical direct-to-video sequels that Disney loves to put out, um, just to follow, you know, the second story around, only focusing on the puppies. And we just got a remake that came out uh, on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I just watched it recently, too, because now that I have Disney+, Plus, which I was a bit optimistic on it, because, you know, in the recent track records of Disney live action remakes, you know, some some of them were either good, mediocre, or just plain bad, or so so, or whatever. But, well, I guess I could say one thing though about the remake is that it, at least it's a lot better than, than the Aladdin and the Lion King remakes that we had. But it'll never top the original film. Why? Because it has its own simple story to tell and had more memorable scenes. It holds up so well that it should never be duplicated, but of course it's always going to be that way. And plus you got a wonderful soundtrack to join in too, including the song Bill and Nalte and, and Peggy Lee uh, joins in. And it's always nice to see all these wonderful dogs, I mean, from those times. And, and they, they even uh, so, I mean, I, I guarantee you that, you know, they did record all the the sounds of, of a dog, you know, barking and whimpering and howling and all, even though they did use regular voice actors to join. That's the case. Now, its budget was only $4 million uh, for its process at the time. I mean, this was the 50s, uh, 1955 to be exact. Yeah, June 22nd of 1955 is when the film got released uh, in the summer. Um, but over the years, uh, it made its um, profit. Um, it had, and I think even for its re-release in '86, uh, 187 million. So it may not be much, but still, I mean, it, it did what they could for for this film to be as successful. Anyway, um, let's begin with the, the review. It stars Barbara Luddy, Larry Roberts, Bill Thompson, Bill Buckham, Berna Felton, uh, George uh, T. Vault, you know, uh, Lee Miller, Peggy Lee, Stan Freeberg, Alan Reed, yes, Alan Reed, uh, long before he went on to do the voice of Fred Flintstone in the Flintstones. Yeah, Furl Ravenscroft, yes, always been best known for <laughs> for providing that that long, uh, monotone voice of his, you know, went on to do the voice of Tony the Tiger in those uh, Frost of Flakes commercials, and of course, sing the song for How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and of course, 
Snoopy Come Home. Yeah, and Dallas McKinnon. It's written by five writers. Uh, Erdman Pennon. It's written by five writers. Um, Erdman Penner, Joe uh, Rinaldi, Ralph Wright, Don uh, DeGrady, and Joe Grant. And it's directed by three directors. Clyde uh, Germany, Wilfred Jackson, and Hamelin Lusk. The movie began set in 20th century Midwestern town, which was inspired by Walt Disney's hometown in Marceline, Missouri. Um, in the year 1909, on Christmas evening, um, we meet a couple named Jim Deere, along with his wife, Darling. Jim just gave her a present, which turned out to be a beautiful Cocker Spaniel puppy, as they named her Lady. So, of course, just when they're off to bed, um, Jim decided to put the uh, lady in the kitchen, you know, so that way she belongs in there to rest and put in a newspaper so, you know, in case, you know, they want to go to, she wants to go to her restroom and all. Yeah, well, you know, they, they mark the territories and all. But she was very lonely, you know, she started howling, making all these n racket noises. You know, those whimpering noises that drives uh, Jim off the raw, but I mean, even Jim decided to cover the door with the chair so the lady doesn't come out, but <laughs> lady just finds a, a better way to get out of there and winds up crawling up into the bedroom and winds up sleeping on her bed. But Jim only promised lady for only one night, you know, so she won't get lonely, but. That one night just seemed to pass for the past, uh, I don't know, a few months, I guess, like six months, as she was fully grown. And Lady just loves the joy. Um, and Lady, on the other hand, just loves to have a joyful life, you know, spending time with the family, even though they probably don't spend time as much because, you know, they're, they're busy all the time and everything. And of course, wants up being friends with uh, the two local dogs that are neighbors. Uh, one is a Scottish Terrier named Jock, and the other is a Bloodhound named Trusty. Now, um, of course, Jock is um, has a Scottish accent and just basically talks about you know ladies, um, you know certain things going around with the family and, and all. And, and just having fun. And then Trusty, on the other hand, um, well, we learned that um, he started out as um, a dog who tracks down criminals uh, from his uh, grand puppy named Old Reliable. And he loves to tell the story. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, he lost his sense of smell. So it's does take some time to actually get used to. Being an old dog, I mean, he's, I mean, his memory isn't exactly as sharp and fresh as, as it used to be. Yeah. Anyway, of course, um, a lot lately, though, a uh, lady has been finding out that there's a rat coming around in their place, you know, going around sneaking and starting to grab um, all their food and milk that's laying on the porch and also attacking everyone so hoping that the lady will find a way to, to stop it but well, anyway well, that will be later on to save for ourselves uh, meanwhile across town we meet a stray mutt who's a terrier you know great hair type named Tramp even though he's been called a lot of names a scoundrel type who just goes around you know Dining uh, on scraps from Tony's uh, Italian restaurant, you know, like to hang around, get into bigger trouble, <laughs> you know, basically a menace <laughs> to society in, in a way. But nevertheless, I mean, he's pretty much a heroic type of guy who just likes to rescue um, his feral strays. A Peggy D's named Peg, of course, voiced by Peggy Lee herself and uh, a bulldog named Bull 
from the local dog catcher, yeah, just going around uh, chasing and, you know, biting his leg and all. So they all had escape as soon as possible. But one day, a uh, lady started feeling very upset, uh, finding out, you know, what Jim, Deer, and Darlene has been up to lately. Well, it turns out that Darlene is pregnant, and they're ready to have their newborn child. Which, that's what led to the fact that the lady's been treated very coldly. Um, but they, they knew they care for her, it's just, they just don't have time. That's the problem. But nevertheless, you know, lady's been very kind to them, and as a family, they were hoping to be together. But it almost feels like, you know, with the newborn coming, they're probably not going to have much time for Lady. And, and I know this is where it leads to when Tramp came along and and actually made a conversation, you know, butting in with uh, Jock and Trusty. You know, starting with the quote, The Lady moves in, the dog moves out. Yeah. And also, um, they were trying to find out what is a baby as they're trying to figure it out for themselves. And, and yeah, there's even a song about that, yeah, through uh, Lady's Thoughts. Now, what is a baby? <laughs> and that's where she tries to find out once she crawled all the way into their bedroom, and that's where we get to see. So, of course, as the baby arrives, and the couple introduce Lady, and she was very uh, fond and protective, too, hoping things would be swell for them. Uh, but then that's where things had to go for for trouble here, was when Jim Deere and Darling decided to spend time, you know, on vacation together. Well, they brought in the Aunt Sarah, yeah, the pretty much the meanest uh, dog-hating the uh, and a relative that they have to bring in to take care of the baby. And not only that, but she even brought in her two Siamese cats. And they caused a lot of havoc, you know, wrecking the entire living room. And Lady was trying to stop them. But it was too late because once um, Aunt Sara had found them, she decided to take Lady directly to a local pet store to find a muzzle so that way lady won't cause any trouble yeah lady takes the blame for all this and that sucks so now you know lady ran away as fast as she can until tramp uh, came to the rescue and decided to find a way to you know get get that muzzle off of her I mean also the fact that lady was being chased down by all these these street dogs in the alley. In order to um, get the, the muzzle off of her, uh, Tramp decided to find a way to go to like a local zoo to get her off and you know, just tricking all these um, zoo animals including the beaver. <laughs> you know, thinking that he's acting like a, a salesman and all. Like, pretending that this muzzle is a log puller enough for the beaver to actually take that log out and, and throw it into the sea. <laughs> and, yeah, so now he gets to have it, and and, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> that was sweet. So now both Lady and the Tramp had been wandering around at night, you know, in the streets, you know, talking about, you know, all the neighbors uh, around, you know, through their days of the week of all the homes that they live in, and also the explanation of how Tramp um, used to be a house dog from his family, which, yeah, now he doesn't have much love in the world because he pretty much is <laughs> the kind of dog who could just hang around in the streets, you know, doing a lot of mischief. So at this point on, for this special evening, um, uh, Tramp took Lady to a local restaurant, which is, of course, Tony's Italian restaurant. And that's where we have, you know, Tony, who's the manager and the owner of the restaurant, joins him with 
his chef Joe, and they're about to, you know, <laughs> and and they're very nice to these dogs too. I'm, that's what I love about that. And they they ordered the special, a spaghetti special, and then, and that's where we got the most famous iconic scene of them all, the spaghetti scene, which is very romantic. Not as silly as people think. It's actually um, very cute and beautiful and wonderful. While the song Bella Note is played, you know, sung by Tony and, and Joe, you know, they bring in the accordion and all. It's just, oh, it's so wonderful. And and if you had to see this movie on Blu-ray or Disney Plus or DVD for that matter in widescreen, it definitely has a perfect shot right there. I mean, you can see tons of details around if you watch it on home video it's just going to be way too close but I guess people who've seen it uh, many times will figure that out <laughs> but it's just and it's beautifully detailed too the way they did it you know how the spaghetti looks the, the meatball and all and, and the fact that both you know Lady and the Tramp you know grab this one <laughs> noodle and, and they, because you know how spaghetti is it's so delicious and and it, it just <laughs> it gets all tangled up too but when they grab yeah they were all slurping the noodles and then they they grab one same noodle and accidentally and then it led to a kiss and it was just <laughs> grand and then tramp just uh, nods the uh, the meatball <laughs> so that way you'll have it yeah spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> And then you can see the, the gleam coming out of Lady's eyes, so beautiful, you know. Oh, I guess I also forgot to mention, uh, Lady actually did have um, a collar, too, um, with a license. And has her name graved onto it, so so that way when, when she runs away and gets into trouble, yes, uh, that's when, you know, they're going to call them and be able to find her and you know, put her over there. Okay, now anyway, as it went along, I mean, they they strolled around on the streets, they went straight into the sidewalk, and they put their paw prints on there, and you can even see the the, the heart shape, uh, which I think is from a different couple that they just added on to, I thought that was really nice, and then they wander around um, through the hills uh, of the entire city, that's where... She gets to see her home over there, you know, and then they explain about, and they slept over there too on the fields until when the morning comes, that's where um, they get into more trouble. Well, at this rate, uh, they just want to spend time together. I mean, Tramp just goes around chasing those chickens around, maybe to grab some eggs or so. Um, but then as that went along, Lady got caught and wants up being taken directly into the the local dog pound, you know, by the dog catcher. And that's where we see all the the stray dogs, you know, all being sent there on the cages. You know, they were howling, hoping they'll find a way to trick them and try to get out. At this point on, though, that's where Peg, you know, sing the song about Tramp, you know, and how he actually saved everyone around, hoping that if Tramp comes, maybe, because apparently um, once Lady was taken away, you know, he's hoping he'll find a way to find Lady and hoping maybe he'll probably be able to, to have all the, the strays escape. And also because there's like a dark side of, of what happened to one of the dogs who wants to be sent to uh, keep out. Uh, in this dark room, and yeah, you, you do meet a lot of dogs uh, join in too. Like you have, um, you have a Chihuahua, you have uh, a Jack Russell Terrier type, you have all these other uh, uh, types of dogs too. Okay, and once a lady was already been taken, um, Aunt Sarah basically um, got a phone call from the dog catcher because you know she's already has a collar and and the license, hoping that she'll be able to return home as soon as it can, of course. Sarah just winds up putting her in a doghouse and tied her up. 
while Tramp finally arrives and this is where she begins to notice uh, the truth about what just happened. So now um, Lady tells uh, Tramp to go away until suddenly the rat came back and Lady was ready to chase the, the rat around and to make matters worse it goes straight into their house. And that's when because they're going to go straight this rat was about to go straight into um, the baby's room um, lady was hoping that maybe of course Aunt Sarah wants to putting the lady into the closet and all typical of her um, because I know she was afraid because that lady was going to attack uh, the baby um, at this point on the dog catcher was uh, being the dog catcher arrived later on. I mean, Aunt Sarah called him because he was afraid that that this one dog, and of course, that would just tr tramp, and, and then Lady just came by. Um, Lady uh, told the tramp that there's a rat coming around, and 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 Tramp just came to the rescue, trying to save the baby from this rat. And and this is where it wrecks habit around the entire room, even knocks uh, the crib accidentally but hoping that the baby will be safe and hoping that uh, Tramp had finally got even with that rat and finally the rat was killed so once uh, Tramp was being taken away by the dog catcher going straight to the pound uh, with the help of um, Jock and and Trusty I mean they're they're continuing their search to find Tramp because they realized that they just misjudged him. Uh, they thought that Tramp actually attacked the baby, but it wasn't. They realized it was the rat. So they had to be on their way. And, and a quite, quite sad scene. A very um, suspenseful right there when he was trying to, to grab um, Tramp as soon as possible. Um, Trusty almost got killed. But frankly, he was alive. Only just has uh, a a bit of a broken paw. But I mean, he was hurt really bad. But got a cast on, so things were all were great. So once uh, Christmas arrives, too. I mean, they came along. Both Jock and Trusty came for a visit, and soon um, Lady and the Tramp are all together as uh, Jim Deere and Darlene have finally adopted um, Tramp. Now he has a license too, and a collar. And also, they have puppies. <laughs> yeah, um, a few Cocker Spaniels and and one uh, Terrier. <laughs> yeah, and this is where they, they tell the story to, to these uh, beautiful puppies about old reliable and all and, and they live happily ever after all together as a family if this isn't one of the most romantic love stories of all time then I don't know what it is but this was terrific I mean the animation is breathtaking all perfectly detailed I, it took a lot of time to try to process it and the aspect ratio of 2 by 66 you know f which was 65 millimeter being shot into it this was destined to actually work I know they had a an Academy aspect ratio to serve the, the purpose of it and even then there was a little bit of details here now I probably noticed that when I saw the Blu-ray as opposed to the 2006 DVD release that I think it was a little slightly cropped um, just a little like for example the scene where Lady got his uh, first uh, collar with a license and her name graved onto it and then you see the mirror scene where apparently the, the mirror it's supposed to be Darlene's uh, thumb that's supposed to be shown, but on these releases it's been cropped a little, so it almost looks like it magically appears. 
Yeah. I mean, that this must have been an error that Disney had put out, and it's still there even to this day. I mean, yes, you can even see it on Disney Plus as well when, when you watch it. Um, um, but the story is definitely straightforward, exactly how it should be, like most romantic stories were, even in that time period. Um, they had terrific chemistry for both uh, Lady and the Tramp. I mean, one is a house dog, you know, living with a loyal family around, and a couple, because they have an infant to join, while the other is just a street dog, you know, out, you know, making a lot of uh, trouble, you know, he's the menace to society to all of them, and everything that went into, and together it's just love at first sight. And I love the fact that Tramp is basically, you know, a heroic, slick type. Even calls uh, Lady uh, Pidge, you know, short for Pigeon. <laughs> so, I love that. And there's moments, too, where, you know, he, he even uh, talked to uh, Lady as well as uh, Jock and, and Trusty, you know, about the stories between, you know, the humans and the dogs and, you know, their point of view and and the way they acted and like for example he, he started mocking you know the the couple you know thinking what they say you know how they do and all that that's just fun and all the memorable scenes of course you know I already mentioned the spaghetti scene uh, but I love the scene too where the, where Tramp actually attacks the rat, which was a very brutal and intense scene, you know, hoping to save uh, the baby in the room, which they knocked the crib and all. Uh, but the way they did this was just perfect. And even the most intense scene at the end, uh, which was almost tragic, was when Trusty and Jock was ready to save uh, Tramp, already being taken away by the dog catcher. And, uh, but it's just well done, well told, exactly from their point of view. Uh, and has a brilliant cast uh, to lend the voices and, and a wonderful soundtrack. I mean, of course, Bella Note being one of them, as memorable as everyone remembers, you know, for the lyrics. Uh, but Peggy Lee, of course, wrote the song, only wrote just six songs. And also the fact that she did do the voice of two characters. Yeah, one is Peg, the Pickadees, and, and the other, Darling. And, um... I would say Peg was sort of an inspiration to uh, Mae West, uh, the actress. You know, hiya, handsome. <laughs> so I, I could definitely see the, the tone right there and the, the body uh, language, movement, especially when she was singing the song about Tramp, uh, you know, while the lady was in, in the dog pound, along with the rest of the strays, even the puppies and... You know, the Chihuahuas and yeah, you know, Jabros Terriers and other dogs. Okay. Um, this is how you do it. Um, and I, I would say Disney did an excellent job uh, creating this story. You know, having try to be as realistic as possible, trying to you know try to make it more visually stunning. Even though you know they had to do some major changes here and there. You know, against his decision. I mean, from other people. But it translates very well. I mean, the way we could see their movements, I mean, the way they act, the way they bark, howl, and, and all. Um, the way it, it tells the story exactly how any love story could be. There's, a, Of course, there are going to be cliches here and there, but that's okay. I can live with them. There are a lot of great scenes except for the ones with Aunt Sarah because that character I would totally dislike she's totally mean-spirited the way she treated Lady because she hates dogs you know the fact that she brought in 
her two Siamese cats in the basket causing all the trouble and Lady takes the blame so she had to wear a muzzle that's unfair I hated that character she, and she needed to be written off that's one thing I, I had a problem with I mean of course you're gonna have a lot of suspense moments and you're gonna have a lot of funny moments uh, hilarious ones and you're gonna have a lot of um, a lot of great uh, experience to to follow and that's why it became one of my favorites uh, ever since I, I watched this many times uh, I wanted to own you know every copy of this I used to have the book um, as, as a kid though I, I did used to read the book a lot but uh, it's been lost though somehow I wish I could find it again and I can see why this movie became so popular uh, over the years. It still holds up. Even for this generation. And that's why everyone should appreciate uh, a classic film like Lady and the Tramp. Because this is truly the night, a very beautiful night, called Bella Notte. Mwah! Bellissimo! <laughs> Anyway, that's the film, Lady and a Tramp, and then I know you should appreciate it as everyone else does. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.